Go, go ahead and request me. Here you go. I'm live. Hey, we're here with, uh, with uh, Yard, Yard Call. How What's doing, going man? on, man? You doing okay? Man, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing pretty good today. I done learned something. I didn't, I didn't know nothing about this going live. I'm finding out something. You got it live, <laughs> man. With all your talent, your voice, you could rap, you, your country, you could teach them about hunting, about motorcycles. You have a lot to offer, my man. Yeah, I, I I do a lot of stuff. I don't. If anybody listens to it, I'm glad that they do. But I, I do a whole lot of stuff, man. Yeah, you, you have the personality, my my friend. I just for some reason I um, I think you may have requested me and all that, and I started looking into yeah. your stuff, and I really enjoyed it. I really do. I don't. I don't know if you tried it to be funny, but you're naturally a funny guy. I I have people tell me that, man. Every now and then I try to be a little funny, but I just joke around like today, man. All right, I had to go to the doctor today. All right, and so you, they got a big, they got a big old complex up there in Macon. Mm -hmm. So I'm going out, and there's these two people, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought they were twins for a second because mm -hmm. they had the same kind of haircut. You know, it was shaved on the side on one side, and it was hanging down on the other side, and they had the same hair. And they come walking across there, and I was like, oh, those are twins. <laughs> and I thought they was brothers for a second, but then I looked, and they was holding hands, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe they ain't twins. And then they stopped and started kissing on each other. And I was like, whoa, hold on. It, oh this is the guy. <laughs> it was the guy and the girl that looked exactly like each other oh, that was dating oh, each oh, other. That's good. They're so, a guy and a girl. Then that's, that's okay. That's okay. So how, well, how, I kind of figured I figured it was like the ultimate form of narcissism. <laughs> you <laughs> date somebody that looks just like yourself. So it's, you, um, how long have you been doing YouTube and Instagram? Oh, man, I, I had a YouTube account, like a personal account for a few years, but I didn't really know anything about, you know, videos and all that. And I put some songs with just some pictures on them, but I, I didn't really mess with it too much, man. And then I kind of started reading about YouTube. So just really actively trying to pursue doing anything on YouTube just this year, uh, really the last four or five months. I, I really ain't pushed YouTube real hard at all. I had one music video out a long time ago and put that out there, but with, other than that, I ain't really done it. Was it the hunting one with you and your buddy? No, that's the new one. We put that one up in uh, in November, and then I done got like a thousand subscribers since November. Oh, and then, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's I only crazy. had about I had about two thousand people on Instagram that were following me, so I done got you know better than six thousand people following me in the last two months. So I, I I hadn't really I don't know a lot about it. I didn't even know about going live, man. You, yeah, now you <laughs> know. Now you know. You can talk yeah. to your fans and all that. And I want um anyone viewing this right now, I want you to check out uh Yard Call, his Instagram, and he also has a YouTube channel. He likes to rap, he could sing country, he has a good voice, um he's a hunter, he likes motorcycles, very entertaining, yeah. funny guy, good guy. Good. Yeah, I like hunting and fishing and barbecuing and everything yeah. southern. I had somebody ask me from if I'm from Alabama. I'm from Georgia. I'm from, from Georgia. I'm from Georgia. Yeah, you yeah. guys, if um, if you get an inch of snow there, you shut everything shuts down. Here, <laughs> here, my friends, we, you should see it is freezing here. It's going to be negative thirty five tomorrow. What? Uh, yes. All no, days. that's yes. Cool. I've never cold. been that cold. Yes, yeah, cold <laughs> for two days. No, it doesn't get like that. I've never been that cold, man. How do you do that? I don't even know how to do that. You stay inside. You stay inside. You know. Wow. Yeah. Negative thirty-five. Yeah. Negative. That is insane. It's got it's got down to the teens, you know, like ten or twelve or something like that around here. It ain't never been no. Ne I thought it only got that cold like up in Alaska or something, man. That's crazy. I know we've. I don't think we've ever had this. It's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. What's the weather like in Georgia now? Uh, probably about 35 tonight, but it, it was about 50-something today, a little rainy. They said it was going to get down and, and we was going to get snow, but, you know, it didn't ever happen. It just got real rainy and cold. Okay. So, okay. But 
Yeah, they was they was talking like we was gonna have some snow today, but it didn't ever happen, man. And everybody around was all excited about it. They were like, "Yeah, you know, all the yeah. kids they don't want to go to school, you know, because like you said, it's a like, if it's an inch of snow, they shut everything down down here. Yeah, and then everybody don't go to work and they pull out the four wheel drives and they go play and run up and down the dirt roads and raise hell. <laughs> That's what they do, man. So you, are, man, are you born and raised in Georgia? Oh yeah, man. I'm I'm from right in the middle part of Georgia, man. I'm from Central Georgia. You it's like it, uh, you love it there, don't you? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. man. I've 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 went around the country some, you know, but never in the winter time up north. I went up to Cincinnati in the summer and watched a, a buddy of mine fight a fellow named Jonathan Ivy. He does like MMA fighting. They call him oh, the Leg Lock Monster. The monster. We went up there and watched. Is he, is he in the UFC? No, it was like uh I don't remember what the name of it was. Uh it was uh it was like a like a undercard. I think he's fought some UFC fights, man. He's fought more than any any kind of MMA guy I've ever heard of, bro. I mean, most of them fight five, ten fights. He's fought hundreds and hundreds of fights, man. He he'll fight somebody drop of a hat, man, you know, and uh, we we went up with him. Is he doing pretty good financially with the fights? Oh. Hey, you know, I don't know, man. He he's had his ups and downs, you know. Uh, but he's he's doing he's doing his thing, you know. For somebody that fights for a living, man, he's definitely out there making a living at it, you know. So that's, that's what good. you that's good. He's that's good. what you want, man. And I but that's been you're a former uh, bas uh, football player and a weightlifter, but yeah, you some injuries, yeah, had a car accident, and uh, and you lost two hundred pounds, right? Well, see, man, I got I got hit by a car in the driver's side uh, back in 2010, yeah. and it messed my back up real bad, but uh, the doctors kind of botched up everything. They didn't realize what I was wrong with me, so I couldn't hardly walk, man, you know, and uh, it was like that for about two, two and a half years. I could barely walk, mm -hmm. and uh, and then, you know, I, I put on, you ever seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory? Of course, that's an old one. All right, how old right are you? yeah, so. How old are you? So, the blueberry girl, man, I blew up like the blueberry girl. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I got, yeah, I got to seeing another doctor, and and uh, they figured out what was going on with my back, man. And then after that, man, I I had went from being on crutches to being on a cane to back to walking. I done done a bunch of stuff. They had told me to get ready to be in a wheelchair, and like I come back from all that and drop two hundred pounds, and you know I'm back I'm back at it now. But I had to get mobile again. You know what I'm saying? Good for you, my man. Good for you, bro. Had, are you able to yeah. lift or do anything yet? Or are you still? That's that's what I've been working on. I was talking with the doctor today. I had a motorcycle accident uh, about a month ago, mm -hmm. and I broke two ribs in my hip. And I was talking to him, man. I was like, you know, how long before I can get back to trying to do some stuff? But right now, I've just been doing. I mean, not right this second, but before that, I've been doing like yoga and tai chi and body weight stuff. Good. But I want to get back into free free weights, man. I saw that video you were posting doing them uh, leg presses. That used to be my favorite thing, man. I used to love the leg press machine. Oh, man, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. My legs aren't the biggest. My strongest point is my uh, um, chest. Do you ever see my workouts with the heavy chains? Yeah, I was watching you do it. Look, you were doing like some push-ups and some body weight type stuff with yeah. the chains on. Yeah. You know? I also do the weights and... What we're doing now is uh, once a week, it's like a group of us, and we call ourselves the uh, Motor City Muscle, and it's uh, guys that are really good shape and all that. Um, right. My, my channel is a lot to do with um, not just not just fitness. I like everyone, you know, I like to bring everyone together, no matter wh what color we are, where we come from. We're all, we're oh, all, yeah. We're all from, you know, we all come from the same place, and we have to learn to love and respect each other. The color of someone's yeah. skin or where they're from, it doesn't, you know, if someone's good, they're good. You know, that that's how it is. Well, that's one thing I, I like about where we're from. But this part of Georgia down here, there's not really a lot of racial tension or a lot of, you know, it's everybody thinks about the South and they always think, you know, it's backwoods and people don't get along. But if you come to this part of Georgia, you know, I mean, like in my family, I've got blacks, whites, Asians, Hispanics. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very it's it's very much a melting pot. You know, they say uh, they say New York's like a melting pot, and then I've heard uh, that Georgia was like the Empire State of the South, and it's very much a melting pot, man. It's not a it's it's not like a lot of people think it is, you know, and 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 the humanity in the area. You know, people are very human and very real with each other. There's not a lot of uh, of hatred and and a lot of you know uh, craziness going on. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of people, 
I don't know that they don't. It seems like a lot of other areas that I that I read about and I see about there's such divisions in people, man, and we're all just people. You know what I mean? We're all just people. We're all just people. And uh, you you know I preach humanity quite a bit, right? Yeah. Did you see? Did you notice that in my video? Yeah, man, I noticed that. I, I, I'm all about you know just it, there's there's not a bunch of different races, man. We're all just a human race, man. We're all just one people on this planet, man. And and oh, just no. being human and and showing love to other people, man. That's that's what life's about, bro. And yeah, I, I can always get behind that. And to talk to you, I could just tell you are a great guy. Just just an awesome guy. You you are, man. So uh, that that's awesome. So are you uh, are you able to work now, or are you you have to? You're yeah, to yeah. I, I I laid out for two weeks, man. I got a little barber shop. I cut oh, hair, man. Oh, yeah, okay. I do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got a little barber shop. I cut hair, and then you know I we do we do music. Me and two friends of mine, my buddy uh, Kale Hub uh, Kale Huggins, and then my other buddy Wesley Green. Uh, Kale, he does music, and he's got an album out now called Kicking Chicken. It's doing pretty good. And uh, Wesley just dropped a uh, a new single, uh, Music Make My Pain Go. And uh, we all three of us are kind of like a little team, man. And, and we all we write, we produce, we make beats. You know, I got a little studio. Wes has got a little studio. And then you know, I shoot videos. I do video editing. I do uh, you know, I do post production for other people. Make websites, like yardcall.com. I built that from from code, you know, graphic design, everything. We do everything in house, man. So it's <laughs> pretty cool. I might need you. I might need you. The thing is, your your videos were very professional. You know, the I appreciate. Yeah, very professional. The one where you were hunting and rapping, and I enjoyed that. I thought that was cool and it was funny. And you guys were uh, you and is that one of your buddies that was with you? Yeah, that's Kale. Kale, uh, Kale Hampton, man. He he's uh, he does he raps. He does uh, you know some some country music and yeah. and let's see, Barry. Yeah, we we do our all on our all our own mixing and everything, man. We do all our own mixing and master. Are you so? Uh, could you sing country too? Are you good with country? Yeah, yeah. We we're, we're doing country music. Huh? You like Garth Brooks? Yeah, man. I like Garth Brooks, but I'm gonna tell you who I like the most, man. Uh, my cousin, his name's Chris Taylor. And that boy can sing his natural born butt off, man. He he ain't he ain't. Is he is he a well known singer? Um, he's he's getting there. He just sung national anthem, uh, you know, probably a couple months ago uh, at the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers uh, game. He that, came out and sung the national. Yeah, he sung the national anthem up there. Is his name is Chris Taylor? Yeah. Does he have a? He's YouTube? Awesome. Is he on YouTube or what is he? Uh, I know he's on Instagram as Chris Taylor Music. Um, I don't know if he's on YouTube or not, man. He's my cousin, but he's amazing, dude. I mean, he is flat amazing, man. And Kale, when Kale decides to just sing straight country, yeah, he's amazing, man. He's he's got a song uh called "Give It Away," yeah, and it's one of the best country songs I ever heard in my life, man. Are you like, serious? straight up? Could could you send me it? I want you to send me it after. Uh, I, when we get off of here, I'll shoot you a link to what he's got, man. Yeah, I want, and, I want to do yeah. it. See that. I love country. Do you remember Kenny Rogers? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I love that. I, I, that's, yeah. I love that. My, music. my favorite, man, I'm a fan of, of like, Waylon Jennings. I really like Waylon Jennings. Uh, I really like, uh, I like Johnny Paycheck, you know, Johnny Cash. Johnny uh, Cash. Yeah, yeah, I, and I like Texas blues, man. I really love like Stevie Ray Vaughan. I know a lot of people say that's not really country, but it's kind of like a country blues fusion. Yeah. I like all that stuff, man. I, that's that's what I really get into. That's great, and I think you have a really good voice, from what I heard. So, do, do you know how to play any instruments? Oh yeah, man. We, I mean, <laughs> besides me, uh, I got this. Let's say me, uh, my buddy Wes, my buddy Kale. My buddy Al Whitley, man, he plays guitar. Um, my buddy Rich plays guitar. I got a buddy down here, Matt, they play drums. I mean, like, all all the instruments and everything that you see or that you hear in any of the music, like, it's all live that we do in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we got we got a set of studio musicians that come in, and, and we're all just kind of like one one big happy family. You know what Good I mean? For you. That's awesome. That's what it's all about, my friend. Hopefully, yeah, so. hopefully one day when my channel gets big enough, I can come visit you guys and, uh, and you know, get you in some of my uh, YouTube or help each other in any way we could. I want to see yeah. you. See. And you will. You will. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Let's see here. We got a comment. 
lifting lifer. He says I played the skin flute. Hey, bud, you're nasty. Go away with that. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> he, he doesn't need that. You're talking to a man. We don't need to hear that. You get a That's lot ridiculous. of this on your live. You know, yeah. just, just ignore them. You know, these comments we don't need. So yeah, Ain't nobody playing with that. Anyway, but yeah, with me, I mean, we play the guitar. I mean, I ain't, I, I don't try to do no solo and guitar stuff. I pick a little bit, man. I do a little bit of keyboard work. You know, I can play the drums better than anything. Uh, play the trumpet oh, a little bit. Oh, good. Yeah, so we, we play a little bit of everything, man. Every one of the guys all plays multiple instruments, you know what I'm saying? I think Hale even plays the harmonica song, but we ain't put none mm -hmm. on any of the uh, on any of the videos. Do you like do you like Aja? The band do I like what? Aja. No, I ain't heard them. Eagles? Oh, yeah, I like the Eagles, man. Yeah. 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 What about Toto? Do you remember Toto? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like them. I like them. Yep. So, yeah, I, I enjoy music. I enjoy music. You like rap, too. I could see that you rap, too. You yeah, I like, I like rap music, man. I like old school rap, you know, kind of like... Uh, I, I like a lot of, like, 8-Ball, MJG, you know, a lot of the Southern rap. Uh, I, I never got into a lot of the, the up north uh, rappers because it, it was so much. I don't like the beefing and the drama that, that, that they pulled into it. And a lot of the West Coast stuff, you know, they, they uh, how do I feel about funk music? Uh, let me tell you something. If you don't like Parliament and fun Funkadelic, I don't know what's wrong with you. They, somebody asked me how I felt about funk music. Funk music is where it's at. Like, I, I'm a huge fan of funk music. So anyway. Did you like Prince? Do you like Prince? Hell, man, of it, course, man. Awesome. Prince is awesome. Awesome. Even like I like Michael Jackson, Madonna, all of them. Yeah. They, they don't make them like this anymore. Prince was unbelievable. That guy could play on you know, an instrument. That's what I'm saying. That's And that's that's why I like the group of guys that I, that I rock with right now is because they're all of them so versatile, man. They, they have huge wells of inspiration inside of them when it comes to writing music and putting stuff out, man. I mean, every all my friends, man, even the ones that aren't re like actually recording and putting music out right now that just come around and pick the guitar and hang out, I have like some of the most talented people around me all the time. It's it's awesome, dude. That's awesome. And and people like look, you you had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs that were unreleased that Prince put out, and a lot of people don't understand how deep his catalog went. Like he 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 wrote so many songs for so many people, man. It was yeah. insane the the amount of talent this guy had. Oh, he was yeah. so talented, man! It was it was unbelievable. It's too bad, yeah. uh, you know. These guys die young, you know. Him, Michael Jackson, and yeah. it, it's too bad. It's too. I'm bad. gonna tell you something. It, it, it's something that I'm kind of passionate about. Uh, it's the opioid crisis and what's going on with people that are that are strung out on opioids and stuff, and all these different guys like. Michael Jackson died because of this this medicine they were using to put him to sleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they said Prince had a had a opioid overdose. You know, it's it's killing people and it's wreaking havoc through musicians, man. And and there's always been problems and stuff with uh with people having you know drug problems and stuff in and around a lot of the music and everything. But uh, it's something that I really hate, man. Uh, because I feel like doctors and stuff me having having had as many wrecks and, and stuff as i've had and you know they they push the opioids on you and those things turn people into an addict man and and they ought to have better options for pain management i'm a huge advocate for cannabis a lot of people they don't like that oh, like and everything marijuana? yeah i'm a huge advocate for yeah. it man in the state of georgia they changed the law to where uh if you had like peripheral neuropathy or nerve damage or something mm -hmm. you could you could try uh those oils instead of taking you know pain medicine or oh, yeah, take pen that's called rick simpson oil right yeah and and those those, those things man they are 100 percent more effective and they're a hundred percent better than any of these opioid pain medicines you, out there you better fucking believe it man those those yeah. will kill you faster than anything you know yeah the man thing is um there was something with um they were they were doing this big investigation on big rob if he smokes weed and all this stupid stuff you probably yeah. have heard of it whatever it was stupid yeah. but the thing is um with um uh 
you know, there was in the sixties, there's a guy, he had skin cancer. His name is Rick Simpson. Do you remember, did you right. remember about that? So he, yeah, he, I've read about him again, and he put the um, oil, he came up with this oil, I guess, from the canvas. Is it, is that what it is? Yeah. And it, after he took the bandaid off and the cancer was gone. So they said in the sixties, this was curing all the cancer, but then the government right. took it off. Do you believe that's true? I know it's true. Uh, right now, I can't remember the company. I don't think it. I want. I want to say it was Merck, but I don't think oh, it is. Merck's a big company. Yeah. yeah there's there's a uh, there's a, a drug company that just got a uh, a government uh, sponsorship or patent or whatever you call it mm -hmm. for them to start studying the efficacy of a uh, THC CBD mixture mm -hmm. into cures uh, as far as tumor reduction cure for cancer. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a whole lot of that would so well right you know, uh and and they have it banned on a federal level it doesn't make any sense man because these drug companies there's two things going on in our country that i wish would change mm -hmm. uh i ain't trying to be political but it's just the truth of sure it. sure we like all right you got 80 percent of people in prisons have some sort of drug addiction problem okay, okay. And, and instead of them getting treatment they go straight to prison all right but at the same time you got these pharmaceutical companies pushing Ritalin to children, which ain't nothing but speed. Adderall. You got them opiates to people that are in pain, which ain't nothing but heroin. And then they, they've made cannabis completely illegal when for thousands of years it's actually been part of the human diet. When they cut that out of the human diet, you started having problems in, in, in humans. You started having illness and sickness. And if I'm, I'm a big, I'm a pro Israel person. Some people, you know, may not be, but I, I do, I do follow what's going on in Israel a lot. Yeah. Uh, now, but I do qualify that. I don't think that uh, the Zionist movement to take over all of the Levant area. I, I don't agree with that. With, I just agree with the, with the fact that you know everybody should have that. a place to live. With the Israelis and Palestinians. I lost you there for a minute. Can it? Yeah, could, you, could you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay. All right. Let me see. Could you hear me now? I very little bit, not hardly. I wonder why. Could you hear me? I turned my volume up. Could you hear Hello? me? Hello. Yeah, could you I hear me? I see your mouth moving, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I could hear you. I could hear you good. Okay. Um, so, you... like, I follow what they what they have going on in Israel, and uh, they've been studying cannabis for about 50 years over there. And there's really, there's there's hundreds of things that it's good for and that it can help people with. So I'm I'm very I'm very big proponent of them changing the laws in America for that, and also of a total reformation of the prison laws. You know, all the laws that that, that have people, you know, just going to prison for these in absurd amount of times. So I'm not a big fan of that, man. Uh, I think we need to change that. But could you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you great now. Oh, I can hear you okay. great. Good. Yeah, that's the thing is. Uh... Uh, um, back overseas, like in the Middle East, they used to have like they used to grow like marijuana and all that, and the government came down and burnt everything down. It was like right. Yeah, I don't know why they did that or whatever it is, but they burnt down all the like uh, marijuana and all the stuff. But you know, it, yeah. Is, so it's legal in Georgia. No, what's legal in Georgia is a five percent solution. Uh, it's it's a it's, you you can get a card for a 5% solution of uh, cannabis oil. And uh, the, it's for the treatment of a lot of different things, pain, neuropathy, and stuff like that. And I, I, they really should, in my personal opinion, they should legalize the whole deal in Georgia. A lot of people, they, they fuss about it. They say, well, and I'm a Christian. I believe in I believe in the Bible. Some people don't, you know God what I mean? Bless. I do. God bless. And, and I, have, I, I have people say, well, you know, it's that ain't Christian. Well, let me tell you something. It's in the Bible. It's all through the Bible. You can read about it. You know what I mean? If you go back to the original Hebrew, uh, it calls it kanabosum. It's it's in several different places in the Bible. They used to put it in in the actual oil that they blessed the Levite priests and stuff with. And really? besides, and I, the fact, I never knew. Yeah. That. In the Bible? Wow. Yes, it's in the Bible. Uh, cannabis has been used, and even in the Islamic cultures, man, uh, for thousands of years, even even in into the uh, old uh, traditional Chinese medicine books and stuff like that. Yeah, it's been in there for 
thousands of years, man. And for me, what it's done for me, man, is is basically uh, like a miracle, man. When I told you I lost that weight and I got mobile and everything again, yeah. it uh, it got me off of several different types of medication I was on, and it it got me mobile again. That and I I, I couple that with yoga and tai chi uh, gave me my mobility back and got me back where I could be mobile and agile, but not quite as hostile as I used to be. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I'm so glad. That's such a pleasure meeting good people like you. You really are. Yeah. You seem to know a lot about religion, and you're a strong believer. And I have a lot of love and respect for that. I well, I stuck, man. I, that's what I do now. I, I make music, and I like to ride motorcycles, and I like to hunt and fish and stuff like that. But in my free time, when I'm not doing those things, <laughs> and when I'm not working in my quiet time. Uh, I like to study religion and history because there's two things that always separate people. Getting talking about about the humanity, you know what you were saying. Yes. Uh, if I don't understand what you believe, and if I don't understand the history of where you've come from, then I can never put myself in a place to have empathy for somebody else. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. 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 I don't, I try to. Don't you, I, don't you think that all all religion comes down to humanity? Just it's humanity. love, man. It's, just it's love. all about loving your neighbor. That's it, loving your neighbor. You know what I mean, and that's you know being peaceful, not having enemies, and all that. And you know that that's what it's all about. You know, you could you yeah. you could go to church all you want, you could pray all you want, but if you if you don't have humanity and you're not your heart's not in the right place, you're you're not knowing how to worship right. You know. Yeah, I. I, I believe you on that. I got a guy over here just asked if I believe in closed or fenced hunts. Uh, I believe in conservation. You know what I mean? Uh, clothes and fenced hunts and stuff like that. Uh, th there's there's a fine line on that. Uh, if you have an overpopulation of deer in the area or something like that, and you have somebody that's running, you know, a uh, a closed off area, you know, whatever you want to call the hunting retreat, you know, and they're breeding deer to be hunting, you know, and then you've also got an overpopulation of deer in the area. I don't think that makes sense. Uh but I'm not saying I'm totally against a a, a fenced hunt or a closed off hunting preserve or anything like that. That's mm -hmm. that's a that's not a yes or no question. So sorry you, about that. <laughs> you seem like you have a lot of land from what I seen. Do you live on land? No, I don't have a whole lot of land. I got family that has some land. Uh, you know, my best friend's family has some land. Uh, I actually live in a little bitty town. It's Ivy, Georgia. It's it, it it's it's got a yeah, it's got a country store. Uh, it's I mean it's it's an old school little bitty town. It ain't got no red lights, and there's a little lake here. So I got a house on the lake, and uh, but the whole county is nothing but country, man. It ain't nothing but trees and dirt. And them's the only two industries down here. You either cut trees and you're in logging or you work at the Kaolin mines and you dig up dirt. That's what, <laughs> yeah. it's country. Yeah, that's like, nice. That's nice. Well, yeah. that's what you seem to enjoy. And that that's really nice. Yeah, I, I've been to Georgia once. It's really nice. Um, I've been to Atlanta and uh, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. They said there's some rough parts like there is here. Yeah. Like, you know, I live uh, if if I live in a nice part, but if I go twenty five minutes uh, east, I go to Detroit. It gets pretty. Uh, it's pretty dangerous there. But I've I yeah. go there all the time. I've been there. We used to, you know, work there. Whatever we had to do, I've never had a problem whatsoever. No, what? Yeah. Not no problems. You know, you've heard of the inner city of Detroit. There's a lot of like. Oh yeah. But I've never had any problems whatsoever, but, you know, so thank you. I'm, well, I know in the 90s, uh, up around the Detroit area, they, they called that little area the murder mitten up there. And I don't know how bad the murder rate it got up there, but I heard it was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, you, you still, I don't know if it's still like that. You still hear of a lot. Do you hear Do you really? a lot goes on in Georgia, too, some parts? Well, uh, close to me, there's a city called Macon. It's about 35, 30 miles from here, something like that. And uh, Macon is kind of like the Memphis of Georgia as far as crime rate. It's it's one of the it's one of the higher crime rates in the state, and uh, they've they've had some problems, you know, with gang activity and and a lot of you know they they've had some problems with a lot of drug activity and stuff up there. And uh, you know, I blame as well. I blame a lot of that on the way our laws are written. You know, I mean, if they were to take out and change some of these laws, you wouldn't have a black market that would be pushing that type of culture. You know what I mean? Right, and, right, right, right. 
Uh, we got somebody over here talking about hog hunting. Look here now. I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. I'm all about some hog hunting. If y'all boys got a spot to go hog hunting and you got some dogs, we can go out there and see what's going on. I don't know if any of the people that are tuning in do any uh, dog hunting or anything like that, but hog hunting with some dogs with some flak jackets on is one of the funnest things you'll ever do. Uh, same you, thing. Mm -hmm. What do you like to hunt? You like to hunt deer? Yeah, yeah. What well, deer hunting, man, is it's it's peaceful it's quiet but my favorite thing to hunt the hands down is to go to a dove shoot dove hunting is the funnest hunting you ever gonna do because you're gonna get to shoot a pile yeah. you know i mean they, when they come flying in over you it's wide open you know and yeah, uh, yeah. and dove, dove hunting duck hunting you know any kind of fowl hunting is fun uh, but deer hunting, you know, that's, that's hunting for meat right there. You know, if you shoot a deer, you get to fill up the freezer. So yeah. that's kind of, and that's the way I look at fishing too. I like to fish, but I don't fish like day in and day out. We'll come through and we'll fish, you know, two weeks and fill up my freezer and my best friend's freezer and, you know, what three or four folks freezer. What kind of fish, what kind of fish do you guys have? Well, I mean, in the lake I live in, uh, they got, you know, you got catfish, bass, you know, you got white perch, you got, you know, brim. You, I mean, pretty much any kind of, you know, southern lake type fish. There ain't really, I mean, there's gars and stuff like that, but that ain't real good eating. We oh, so, yeah, we have, a we have Lake Michigan here. Yeah. I had somebody ask me how I found out about you. So I've been, I was surfing around, and I've been looking at, uh, you know, uh, some different stuff as far as uh, working out and whatnot like that, and I've been trying to find some more inspiration in my own life. Uh, and I come across Big Rob, mm -hmm. and he was knocking it out, and I was like, okay, let me follow this guy. You know, this guy looks like he's got it going together with his workouts and Thank everything. You. Well, you, you're, yeah. you really motivate and inspire me. You're, you're, well, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate your that. Your knowledge, your good heart, that's very – that's motivating and, and inspiring. It really is. It really is. So I really thank you. I really thank you. That's, yeah. you know, it's a well, pleasure I talking to you. I appreciate you letting people into your gym time, man. A lot of people don't realize it, man, but I know when I worked out a lot, that, that was like my personal time. I go in the gym, you know, I could get in that mode, you know, of, of basically, you know, it's like going to work, you know, you get in there and you get that work mode and then it's, and, and you're, and you're, and you're pumping it out and you and you can tune out the world. But what you're doing is you're letting people into that personal time. You're letting people see you go to work in there in that gym. And, and that's, man, that's a big thing, man. And it also helps people. It's motivating and it's a teaching thing. If people don't know how to live properly and stuff like that. You, you know, know the thing is what I don't understand, but then I got to get a lot of people on there saying, tell me nasty stuff, haters. And I'm like, man, first of all, this does because, you, you know, when I go on there, I like to train kind of hardcore. But, you know, when you're taking your phone around and kind of answering those questions, you're giving them your yeah. time. The, the least right. they can do, if they don't want to watch you, don't watch you. But the least they can do is give you respect and not say nasty stuff. And, you know, I don't right. understand when people do that. I, I just don't understand that. You know, and even to film videos, as you could see, it's time consuming in a gym. Okay, you do a set, you have to turn off the camera. I like to keep moving. I do like 90 minutes nonstop. I go pretty right. hard and heavy. But then if you're filming, you have to kind of move the camera around, stop. So it gets in the way of your workout. But, you know, if I, if I help or motivate one person, it's worth it to me. But, you know, I want to feel loved and appreciated, too. And hopefully, hopefully I'll get that one day. It's, I'm not. What do you think? You know, what hopefully, hopefully I will. What do you think about like circuit training versus, you know, people doing like real heavy sets and taking, you know, taking extended periods of rest in between there? You know, I've heard people say that, that, you know, one shreds you versus the other one bulking you up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what do you? Exactly. So, so like, this is, this is what I do. I do 90 minutes, uh, pretty much nonstop. I'll do drop sets, super sets. I'll come back to the uh, treadmill. I'll do a jog or a walk for five minutes, get off. So I go by feel. Now the other way, yeah. the other way when you when you, you you know you're taking your time and all that, that's more like for power lifting and strength. What I'm doing more is like trying to build muscle and lose fat and even work my uh, internal organs too. But I but I love just moving fast. I can't you know. That, yeah. But like the other day I was doing breakdown sets with three fifteen and down to two seventy five down to to like 45 down people don't understand that we're, we're going non-stop it's not that easy 
If I was to, yeah. if I was to do the powerlifting way and wait like three minutes, I could go a lot heavier and get more reps in. But I like to, yeah. I like to you know, the way I want to work out is I'm a thicker, bigger guy. I have the muscle, but I want to, I want to, you know, continue gain muscle, but I want to lose the fat too, lean up a little bit. And especially for the Arnold Classic, I'm going to be there in uh, in Ohio and. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to be there and I'm going to meet some of my uh, supporters and fans and you know let them get to know me as a person and see that you know I'm real. I'm real. I truly. That's care. awesome, man. I really. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I actually, I actually, uh, the other day I was in the bookstore, man. I bought that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger bodybuilding guy. You know that that bodybuilding Bible guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah. I picked that up so I could try to go back through some things. I, I when I did most of my working out was when I played football and everything. Yeah. And uh, for a few years after that, we I stuck with it pretty heavy. But uh, you know, you get to working and running around, and then when there's not that immediate need to be bulking up and getting stronger you know it, yeah. for me it just kind of i i lost some of my drive for all that and then after that wreck it just really it just went downhill you know so yeah. i had to uh, I, I had to kind of bounce I, I back. you're gonna get back and and no matter what you you always have my support anyway i could help you i will <laughs> i appreciate it yeah, yeah you're my buddy thank you so much yeah make sure well I'm you're awesome thank you're you. an awesome guy man like i i, I talked to hundreds of people on instagram all the time and you are one of the dopest individuals i've had the pleasure of meeting on instagram talking to you and everything i mean you're a real dude you're positive you're always saying something that's positive and supportive and, and that's awesome man because there's not a lot of people there's today's culture has gotten into such a negative vibe they feed so much on the negativity man it's so refreshing to see somebody that's just like look i'm trying to kill it just so I can get, I want to get bigger. I want to get better. I want to help other people learn what's going on. You know sure. what I'm saying? It's, it's awesome. It's Did awesome. Did you ever know that I was training a young boy with uh, Down syndrome? My friend uh, King. No. King. Yeah. I didn't know that. To my videos, and I was doing this at Lifetime Fitness, and then they started the trolls started writing mean stuff. His mom has stage four terminal cancer, so I've known. Oh him. man. I've been a baby, and I want to work with Robbie. He's 20 years old, and and I was working with right. him. This guy is so so motivated. He could do 70 push-ups at once. I mean, he's very wow. motivated to work out with, too. So he was yeah. my buddy and all that, and they started writing negative comments, so we had to get him off of YouTube. People could be very cruel on social media. So, so you yeah, to be careful. Not everyone thinks like you and I and, you know, try to be positive, you know, but you, you get a lot of trolls and haters on here. So... Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so... I, I, you I, just kind of have... I feel like I feel like you know you just kind of have to ignore that and keep on doing what you do. I had somebody tell me one time they said find what you love and do it with everything you got, you know, and you you even if it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else, you yourself will flourish, you know what I mean? And then yeah. I had another guy I had another guy tell me one time, he said uh whatever you do, do it not like you're doing it for a paycheck or for anybody else. Do it like as if you were in front of God and you were trying to do the best you could do for him. Keep that type of thing in mind, and then you always make sure you put your best foot forward. And those two things I'll, I'll really – I'll keep that in mind. I will keep that in mind, that I'm in front of God. and I, that, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's, that, I really uh, – I have a lot of love and respect for what you just said. That, that's awesome. Do things like God's right in front of you. You know, then you, right. then you better – you're only going to do and say positive things, you know. And, uh, and That's help right. others. I'm very. It's all, I'm all about you know helping others, and you know. So I'm I'm looking forward to uh, talking to you more. I'm gonna DM you my uh, personal number, and if there's anything. Ah, lost. Yeah.